And welcome back to the show. Well, if you've been on our website, I've been listening to our show over the last week, you will know that we are proud to announce the fact that Cold and Orgy are coming to Australia for an absolutely mammoth tour. And we thought today we would actually get Scooter from Cold on the band, on the phone to chat a little bit about this amazing tour. Welcome to the program, Scooter. Hey, thank you. Nice to be here. No worries. Now, mate, there are so many excited fans about this tour coming up in October. Tell us a little bit about how this has all come together and how you feel about heading to Australia for this tour. Um, first of all, we're very excited about coming to Australia. Uh, you know, we've been touring for 25 years now, and we we haven't had a chance to get over there. So we played the UK a couple times and the States all the time, but... Um, It'd be nice to finally be over in Australia and see Australian Cold Army. Um, the tour came about, we we are on tour right now with Orgy, and they're celebrating the Candy Ass record. Um, we previously finished a tour for the year of the Spider anniversary. Um, and so I think when, you know, us and Jay got hooked up from Orgy, it just kind of made sense. And uh, we got the offer to bring both of those albums over there to play. Um and, uh, you know, it kind of just fell into place. So, you mentioned um, about the Cold Army here in Australia. Are you aware of how popular the band are here, or will that be one of the biggest surprises for you when you land here? I mean, we have a lot of social media people, you know, that always uh, hit us up about Australia. And the analytics from our, uh, you know, plays and stuff, we can tell Australia is a decent market for us. So, um yeah, man, I think it'd be a cool thing to finally be able to see everyone. So Year of the Spider is such an iconic album. For many of us um, growing up during that period, it was a, it was one of those albums that kind of that changed the genre a little bit. What's it been like for you going back and revisiting the album 20 years later? <clears throat> um, you know, when we did the Year of the Spider tour, it, granted, you know, all Colts records... Uh, evolve into a different kind of sound, a different thing. So going back to that album, um, it really felt good. That was one of our heavier albums, uh, that 13 Ways Sweet on stage. And uh, just the, you know, the fevered pitch from the fans coming to the shows just gave us, uh, like we're creating another new record that later on this year, and we were kind of like, I think we're going to go back to our more of our roots, um, specifically because of that tour and the reaction we had to it. Um, so I don't know, man. I'm not really a nostalgic person. I had a guy interview me yesterday about that, but I think Cold Songs, they've, they've held so strongly with me personally and with the fans throughout the years. Um, we've always continued to play songs from that record um, throughout all our tours. Um, so it's it's going to be a really cool thing. And, you know, I, no, I, I definitely want to play a different uh, Year of the Spider in its, in its entirety. However, I want to, you know, we're going to add some more songs as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we haven't been there. So, you know, we want people to kind of get a vibe of all of the, you know, the songs through our catalog that mean something to them. You kind of touched on something that I'd never really thought about before. I know when a lot of bands go back and do an album in its entirety like that, sometimes they're doing tracks yeah. that have never been played live before, but... Like you said, your sound has evolved from that album um, over the years. What was that like going back and having to almost recreate that sound that you've evolved away from? Well, like I was saying earlier, I, I don't know if we ever really uh, playing them live. We've always kind of played songs from you know, the Spider Live and incorporated that into our sets. So it really wasn't um, a big, you know, uh, it wasn't hard to find those sounds because we were always that sound yeah so going back and i know you like you said you're not a nostalgic person but going back can you remember what it was like for you at the time when you first sat down to work on that album it was a it was a, a experience for us you know we we had gotten howard benson uh the producer to work on that record with us and i was coming off a record 13 ways we don't stage which was more um it was more analog you know really things really hadn't switched to digital yet and when we went into do year of the spider i think the reason that record sounds the way it did it's not it's produced but not overly produced um is because it was 
it was Howard Benson's first time and our first time going from, you know, half analog to digital. It was, uh, we were kind of going into that, into trying to get into digital at that moment during that process of that record. So we had recorded a lot of things on analog and then trans, trans, uh, exposed them to digital. So, um, it just created a cool sound. And then I think, you know, that was when Howard started finding his footing in the digital world and stuff and doing all the things with plugins and it was brand new when we started it. So it was a cool experience. So that tr- that album also gave us some absolutely classic tracks from you guys, Stupid Girls, Suffocate. Did did you kind of know that those tracks were special when you were working on them, or did that come as a, a, a complete shock for you guys when they took off the way that they did? I don't know. I think with 13 Ways to Bleed on stage, there was like a... There was momentum going into Year of the Spider, and when we got into the writing process of that, um, everything just felt really good. It felt like, here it is, like this could be the best songs that we've written. Um, and I think everything was exciting at that time. You know, we were younger, everything was, uh, the momentum was going strong, and uh, I remember I went to Hawaii to write lyrics for that record, um, and just took some time off, and I, when I came back and went and sang for Howard, we were like, this could be it. This could be a great record. Um, and I feel, you know, I, I, I know I talked to Howard recently as well, and we feel that that record definitely has held up through time, um, you know, and for the Cold Army as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, of course, like, sometimes going back and revisiting an album like that can bring back um, some bad memories for a band as well. How do you cope with that when you're having to go on stage and and record tracks that, that might have a, a bad memory for you or not a good memory. Do you find that um, difficult going onto stage and, and performing tracks that bring back bad memories like that? Um, but, you know, I learned a long time ago when we were doing our first record, and I've told this story before, but um, it's it, uh, Ross Robinson. We did our first record. I remember when I was recording with him, when, but when I was, uh, he had asked me to come, to Fred Durst had asked me to come to his house to play a song for him. And I went in and played this song called Ugly and Bleed. Um, and he stopped me and brought me out to L.A. and made a record. He thought it was beautiful. And then I'm in the studio recording uh, Ugly. And when I'm in the booth singing, Ross keeps stopping me. And he's like, um, he goes, dude, you gotta, you, you gotta get, you gotta go deeper. And then he comes in the booth with me. He goes, can I come in the booth with you for a second? He goes, bro, he goes, when you, he goes, the way you're going to, you know, affect people's lives and, and bring them into that moment. Every time you step up to a microphone, whether it's recording, whether it's live, you have to transport yourself back to the moment when you wrote that song and those feelings uh, that you were going through um, so people can feel it, you know. And I think I've taken that throughout my entire career. Um, every time I get up to the microphone, I put myself back in that place. It's definitely not been healthy at some times in my life. Um, however, I feel as I'm getting older, I have learned to cope with, you know, I have coping me- mechanisms for that, and it's not as bad as it used to be. Yeah. Um, but I, st- I still put myself in that position because I need it to translate to people like that. And I can tell by the reaction that I have on stage when I'm singing it that the cold aren't the, pe- the fans um it i transport them to that moment that when they needed that song yep yeah yeah i was going to say that because yeah. i've i found when i went back and listened to the album over the last couple of weeks um since the tour announcement that listening to some of the tracks on that album reminded me of exactly where i was at the time when i listened to the album do you have a lot of fans come up to you and and talk to you about those kinds of things if there's tracks on there that have got them through a hard time or or help them out in their life yeah i believe that you know that's really like a that's a cold show honestly like that's always been that way with not just that record but all of our records like we uh it's a we consider it a family meeting when we when we have uh, a show you know because we have these fans that have been loyal to us for all these years and they come up in every show every day we play they come up and share their experiences and how songs have helped them 
uh, you know, overcome the hardest times in their lives, uh, save them from alcoholism, you know, dealing with death, all kinds of things. And uh, I'm really glad that it translated to them. But, you know, all the songs, are, they come from a real place. It's not bullshit. It's not, I don't make things up when I write. It's yeah. all, uh, yeah, it's all from a real place. You mentioned that you've got some a new album coming out as well. Tell us a little bit about what we can expect from from that album and what kind of things have been inspiring you when you've sat down to write this album. I mean, we're just starting the writing process of that album. However, I feel, you know, before Cold, there was Grundig, and we were, it was a slower, heavier sounding type of band, more, more like the first record kind of thing. Yep. Um, it's a little punk rock, a little grunge, all of that thing combined. And um, I really want to go back to that kind of sound. And I don't want anything overproduced or anything like that. I really can't stand bands that just keep doing this overproduction and glossy record. Um, so it's going to be a little dirty, a little grungy, and uh, just another real record. Man. Awesome. I cannot wait to be able to hear that new album. But... Uh... Scooter, I know we're running out of time very, very quickly. So to finish off, what would you like to say to all of your fans out there who are going to buy tickets to these amazing shows? I think if you come to a cold show, um, that and Orgy's amazing as well. They're a great live band. Um, but when you come to a cold show, we create a beautiful night for people, man. We, we literally will transport your ass back to time, you know, when you've been dealing with some things. And it's a, it's a night. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. Um, so we welcome everyone and thank you guys for having us.